Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Reflection Measurements with Rodian Schwartz CNL. In this short presentation, we'll provide some examples of how to make basic one port or reflection measurements using a Rodian Schwartz ZNL series vector network analyzer. This presentation assumes a general knowledge of network analyzer measurements. If you're unfamiliar with these topics, or if you'd like a brief refresher, you might want to watch the presentations Understanding the Smith Chart, Understanding Visoire and Return Loss, and or Understanding S Parameters before beginning this presentation. Let's start with connecting the ZNL to the device under test or DUT. In one port or reflection measurements, we connect the DUT to one of our VNA ports, usually with some kind of cable. When making measurements, we would normally want to first calibrate our VNA using the end of the cable as our reference or calibration plane. In this presentation, we'll assume that calibration has already been performed, but please see the presentation VNA Calibration Basics with the Rodian Schwartz ZNL if you'd like step-by-step -step instructions on how to perform a calibration. To select the measurement type on the ZNL, press the Measure Hard key and then choose S11 under S Parameters since we'll be connecting our DUTs to port 1. S22 would be selected if we were connecting our one port device to port 2 on the ZNL. Remember that an S11 measurement transmits power on port 1 and measures the power that's reflected back from the device under test and received back on port 1. The three most common ways of representing the reflected power are dB magnitude, which corresponds to return loss, a Smith chart, and standing wave ratio, or SWR. To change the format, select the Format Hard key and then choose the desired format from the menu. One final note. In this presentation, we're explaining reflection measurements using one port devices, but it's important to know that reflection measurements can, and often are, made on multi port devices as well. For example, we might want to know how much power is reflected by a filter's input port, that is, S11 as well as how much power passes from the input to the output, or S21. Our first example involves testing a dummy load, which is designed to absorb RF energy over a wide frequency range. For this reason, a dummy load is constructed to be mostly resistive, and therefore should have a very low SWR over its operating frequency range. For this particular dummy load, the stated operating range is DC to 500 MHz, and VSWR over this range is specified as 1.1 or less. Note that for this example, we've connected the dummy load directly to port 1 of the ZNL instead of using a cable, and therefore we would need to perform calibration directly at the port as well. To characterize our dummy load, we select measurement type S11 and format as SWR. We set a frequency range of 5 kHz to 500 MHz, and at first glance, it would appear that SWR is close to 1 over this frequency range. But let's take a closer look. By pressing the Scale Amplitude Hard key and selecting Auto Scale Trace, we can now zoom in on the trace. The vertical scale shows SWR from 1.0 to 1.2, and setting the reference value to 1.1 gives us a convenient line at the dummy load's specified SWR limit. We then use the Marker Hard Key and Marker Menu to place a marker where the trace crosses this line, and we see that SWR is, in fact, only below 1.1 up to 340 MHz, not 500 MHz as stated in the dummy load specification. The next example involves testing an antenna. The reason we're choosing an antenna is that it's almost the opposite of a dummy load in terms of its behavior. The impedance of an antenna, and hence its SWR, varies widely by frequency. In fact, most antennas have a low SWR only over a small frequency range. When we say that an antenna is resonant at a certain frequency, this means that it has low SWR at that frequency. Antennas, unlike dummy loads, can also be strongly affected by their environment. For example, many antennas require some type of ground plane to function properly at their specified frequencies. The impedance of an antenna is also affected by nearby objects, even when these objects aren't directly touching the antenna. Our mag mount antenna in this example is supposed to be resonant at both 144 and 440 MHz. After we attach our antenna to port 1 of our analyzer and place it on a metallic surface, we're ready to make some reflection measurements. Following the same steps as when measuring the dummy load, we set our frequency range from 100 to 600 MHz 
and set two markers, one on 144 MHz and one on 440 MHz. Looking at our marker values, SWR is about 1.6 at 144 MHz and just over 2.0 at 440 MHz, which is acceptable for most mobile radio applications. In the last example, our antenna was reasonably resonant at 144 MHz, with an SWR of about 1.5. What if we wanted to improve this? We could try moving the antenna to different locations and see if this changes SWR. We could also try to alter the length of the antenna by either trimming it or adding length to it. Another way of doing this is by adding a matching network or a tuner and adjusting the impedance of our tuner such that SWR is minimized at the desired frequency. Looking at our untuned antenna, we see an SWR of about 1.5 at 144 MHz. If we add a tuner or tuning network and adjust it while observing SWR, we can reduce our SWR at this frequency to almost 1.0, a perfect match. Recall that SWR only tells us the degree of mismatch, not the nature of the mismatch. We can use the Smith chart display on the ZNL to see our antenna, or load impedance, as a complex value, in this case lying in the inductive upper half of the chart. Again, using our tuner, we can move our complex impedance fairly close to the center of the Smith chart, which corresponds to a perfect match or an SWR of 1. Time for a quick summary. First, recall that reflection measurements are made using a single port, that is, either an S11 or S22 measurement. In this presentation, we've measured one-port devices, but don't forget that reflection measurements are also commonly used on multi-port devices as well. When making reflection measurements on the ZNL, our results are usually displayed as return loss, SWR, or using a Smith chart. And finally, we saw how we can use the ZNL to adjust matching networks, or tuners, and reduce impedance mismatches between source and load. This concludes our presentation, Reflection Measurements with Rodian Schwartz ZNL. If you'd like to learn more about network analyzers or network analyzer measurements, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.